This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a sci-fi action horror film called Mutant Chronicles. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. According to the sacred book of prophecy called The Chronicle, extraterrestrial machines landed on Earth with the sole purpose of turning dead and dying men into humanoid killing machines called mutants. The tribes of men banded together to defeat these mutants under the leadership of the warrior Nishdain. They were able to seal their enemies underground for 10,000 years. That was until four mega-powerful corporations, Mishima in the east, Bauhaus and Imperial in Europe and Africa, and Capital in the west, waged a great war over Earth's limited resources. On a battlefield in Europe in the year 2707, Capital troops are sitting out the devastating artillery attacks from the Bauhaus army. Unbeknownst to them, they're fighting right on top of the mutant's ancient seal. In the capital dugout, Captain Nate Rooker, grizzled old veteran, checks on his soldiers who are in bad shape. On the other side, Lieutenant Maximilian von Steiner orders Bauhaus soldiers to breach the enemy lines. Meanwhile, Nate catches up with his friend Sergeant Mitch Hunter, who just got back from a bloody patrol. After Hunter collects dog tags from dead soldiers, he confirms that the Bauhaus army has the advantage against them. While scoping out the approaching enemy, Nate chats with Hunter and the smart-mouthed corporal Jesus El Jesus de Barrera about what they believe in. El Jesus tells Hunter that he's going to hell, but Nate just tells him that Hunter doesn't care about anything. Hunter admits that he's only there to destroy and get paid. When Bauhaus soldiers arrive in front of their trench line, Nate organizes their attack with open fire. Bauhaus soldiers fight back with grenades and gas bombs which overwhelm the capital troops. When the enemies breach their trench, Hunter saves Nate from getting shot and vice versa. Nate then asks Hunter to take care of his girls if something happens to him. Hunter just gives him a sarcastic reply. While the battle reaches its peak, the heavy bombardment breaks the ancient seal and unleashes the vicious pack of mutants. The mutants swiftly kill any soldier in their path with sword-like arms. Bauhaus soldiers discover a pile of bodies, but as soon as they realize they weren't responsible for it, they're ambushed by the mutants. At the same time, more savage mutants are climbing out of the pit where the broken seal was. Meanwhile, the Capital Army discovers body parts floating in their trench. Hunter and his team eventually find themselves in the field of smoke where mutants are hiding. Before the mutants can attack, Hunter is assaulted by Steiner, who accuses him of mutilating their soldiers. They have a one-on-one -on -one brawl that escalates into a knife fight before their men step in to defend them. Suddenly, both sides are ambushed by mutants. As soldiers scramble to fight off the mutants, El Jesus gets wounded, so Hunter carries him to the rescue ship. When Hunter looks back to the field, he sees Nate as being outnumbered by mutants. El Jesus, in his panic, tells the pilot that there's no one left on the field. As the ship takes off, Hunter desperately screams for his friend. Nate yells for Hunter to go, knowing that he has no chance of surviving. News of the Broken Seal reaches the snowy monastery of the Brotherhood, the descendants of Nishdain. Brother Samuel, the head monk, and Severian, a female monk under the Oath of Silence, unlock a room where the Chronicle and several ancient swords are kept. Brother Samuel later reads the Chronicle to the other monks, reminding them of their ancient lore. The mutants are now collecting dying soldiers into the machine to create more mutants. However, the Chronicle also foretells of someone who will save humanity from damnation. Six weeks pass, and the capital's defenses are weakened by invading mutants. Brother Samuel meets with the alien Constantine and other corporation ambassadors. He tries to convince them to help him gather 20 men and a ship to destroy the machine and fulfill the prophecy. The ambassadors dismiss him because their evacuation ships headed to Mars are the only means of salvation for them. Once Brother Samuel and Constantine talk in private, Constantine informs him that the mutants will overrun the city and his illness prevents him from leaving Earth. Since he'll be dying soon, he grants Brother Samuel a ship and a stack of tickets for the team he's assembling. After an attendant ushers Brother Samuel to evacuate, Constantine is killed by mutants. One morning, Hunter visits Nate's wife and child to inform them that Nate is missing. His wife is devastated, not only by Nate's disappearance, but also because they're left to die on Earth without evacuation tickets. Hunter tries his best to comfort her. That evening, Hunter drowns his guilt in liquor when Brother Samuel appears beside him in the bar. The monk tells Hunter that he was referred to him by El Jesus, and he's offering an opportunity to save the world. Hunter quickly turns him down because he doesn't care anymore. Despite this, Brother Samuel leaves evacuation tickets for Hunter. The next day, just as Nate's wife grimly prepares a deadly cocktail for herself and her daughter, Hunter's evacuation tickets arrive at the door, giving them hope. At the orientation held at the Brotherhood Monastery, Hunter meets the other members of Brother Samuel's suicide mission. John McGuire, upright Imperial captain who refused his ticket, 
Valerie Duval, a Mishima corporal who has two kids and 61 kills. Juba Kim Wu, a Mishima corporal that smiles at the face of death, along with Maximilian von Steiner and El Jesus. The team is informed that their mission is to find the machine and blow it up using a unique device that originally came from the machine itself. It's also said in the Chronicle that they have to find the key to detonate the device. If ever they fail their mission, everyone on the planet dies. Later, Steiner shows them a captured mutant so they can learn how to kill it. Mutants can't feel pain, but they can kill them with clips, explosives, and swords. Suddenly, the mutant breaks out of its chain and attacks Duval. Severian steps in and stabs it with her sword. Hunter approaches the mutant before it dies and hears it whisper for help. Hunter asks Brother Samuel if he thinks that there might be someone alive inside the mutant, but the monk can't give him a sure answer. After receiving their sacraments and being given their sacred swords, the team boards a military shuttle headed for the Imperial City of Canaan, where the machine is. Mid-flight, their shuttle is suddenly struck by an airship that is operated by a mutant. The team rushes to the evacuation pod where they're released from the shuttle. Panic ensues when the pod's parachute rips. The team argues while they hurtle across the sky and through a building where they finally open the emergency parachute and crash into the ground. After their rough landing, McGuire is fatally wounded. He asks Hunter for a clip and blows himself up before the team heads into the city. At Kanan, the team plans their way to get through the city without getting caught. Just then, they witness a crowd of civilians being refused entry on an evacuation ship by two power-tripping guards. Despite the team's warning, Hunter steps in from hiding and kills one of the guards so that the civilians can board the ship. Later that night, the team reaches the old church. They carefully go through the catacombs that lead them into the ruined city of the ancients. There, they entered an abandoned skyscraper and go down an elevator shaft. Juba volunteers to keep watch while the others rappel 60 stories down the shaft. When the two run out of rope, Brother Samuel wonders why he can't find the ledge that's instructed by the Chronicle. Brother Samuel gets flustered and accidentally releases himself from the rope. Hunter catches him in time, but the chain breaks. To his amusement, Brother Samuel falls to the ledge he was looking for. Suddenly, a mutant appears and attacks him. Hunter drops down to help him kill the mutant. As the others are heading down, they realize that Hunter and Brother Samuel are fighting a mutant. Steiner decides to drop a grenade to help him. However, Hunter and Brother Samuel kill the mutant before the grenade drops. Severian swiftly catches the grenade and throws it down to the bottom of the building so that no one gets hurt. Unexpectedly, the explosion brings out a swarm of mutants. Juba finds himself fending off mutants on his own. Meanwhile, the rest of the team is also outnumbered by mutants. Another explosion causes the elevator to drop while Juba is inside fighting a mutant. The elevator crashes on top of the mutants about to attack them. Their relief fades when the mutants quickly get back on their feet. Miraculously, Juba's hand emerges from the wreckage and drops a grenade that kills himself and all the mutants. After mourning Juba's sacrifice, the team realizes that they are now trapped by the rubble. Brother Samuel talks about faith as he empties his water bottle. The stream leads them to discover an underground tunnel underneath the debris. When they get through to the other side, they find themselves on a narrow ledge looking down on mutants that drag people to the machine. To his surprise, Hunter sees Nate getting dragged by the mutants. The team threatens Hunter to continue the mission, but Hunter still goes down to retrieve his friend. The others have no other choice but to continue on without him. Hunter deftly saves Nate from the mutant and tells him that his girls are headed to Mars and then carries him to safety. Nearing the machine, the team makes its way through a narrow stone platform while a pack of mutants mauls people underneath them. Meanwhile, Hunter sees Nate is badly injured, so he tries to make a sling for him. Nate stops him and orders him to finish the mission. Reluctantly, Hunter sits by his dying friend. Nate stammers and holds back his tears and tells Hunter what he would like to say to his girls. Without warning, Hunter shoots Nate in the head as an act of mercy. After collecting Nate's dog tag, Hunter wills himself to move without his friend. Suddenly, the rocks crumble beneath Steiner and he finds himself holding onto the ledge of the platform. The others try to save him, but Steiner passes the back to Severian first to keep it safe. Because of this, Steiner falls into the den, where he has to fight off a pack of mutants. Brother Samuel pushes for the others to continue, but they all eventually go down to save Steiner. During this fight, Steiner's arm is severely wounded. Suddenly, El Jesus's gun explodes, killing him instantly. Steiner also gets blown by the impact and is soon dragged by a mutant. To her horror, Severian watches as Brother Samuel gets stabbed in the chest by a mutant. After following the sound of the explosion, Hunter arrives to see El Jesus's corpse in the aftermath of the fight. To his surprise, Severian breaks her silence and tells him that the mutants dragged everyone to the machine. 
Hunter picks up the scattered pages of the Chronicle off the floor and demands Severian to read it, but she can't. When he confronts her about it, she says that she doesn't need to read the Chronicle to believe that it's true because that's the nature of faith. When she asks him what he believes in, he tells her that he isn't paid to believe, he's paid to destroy. Hunter and Severian create a hidden bomb near the pit where the mutants drop people into the machine. They blow the bomb before Duvall and Steiner are thrown in. Later, Hunter and Steiner lower Duvall and Severian down into the pit with a rope so that they can get to the heart of the machine. At the same time, dozens of mutants stalk the two men through a hole in the cave. Suddenly, Steiner decides to leave Hunter to hold the two women. As Hunter is about to fall into the pit, he looks over at Steiner, who gives him a salute before blowing himself up along with the mutants. The women are falling to the ground while Hunter lands on a conveyor belt leading into the machine. There, he's tied, burned, and injected with a mysterious liquid by the machine. When it tries to poke his eye out, he shoots it and escapes. Just as Duval and Severian arrive at the heart of the machine, they're stunned to see Hunter looking like a mutant. When he yells at them to give him the bomb, they realize that he hasn't been completely transformed. More mutants rush to stop them. Duval and Severian fight them off while Hunter tries to place the device and detonator in the machine. To his frustration, the detonator doesn't fit anywhere, so he frantically tries to find answers from the Chronicle. All of a sudden, Brother Samuel appears in front of Severian as a mutant and attacks her. She has no choice but to fight. Duval eventually gets overpowered by a mutant and is killed on the fall. Meanwhile, Hunter yells for Severian to kill Brother Samuel. When she attempts to calm the former head monk, he stabs her, and she falls into the abyss. During Brother Samuel and Hunter's tense fight, Hunter attempts to see a pattern in the sacred sword aligned with the schematic for the key. He quickly grabs the sword and stabs Brother Samuel onto the heart of the machine and twists it. Immediately, everything starts collapsing. In a moment of clarity, Brother Samuel tells Hunter to jump and have faith. Hunter jumps and lands in an underground lake. Hunter watches as the machine launches upwards, breaking through the Earth's surface and flying into space. Finally, the prophecy is fulfilled. Hunter, the non-believer, becomes the savior of the world. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.